main problem with using banks and others is they, they might tell you it costs $10 or $20, or maybe they say it's free, but the truth is they really hide their, their fees in the exchange rate. In 2011, Estonian Crystal Carmen and a friend started a money remittance business called TransferWise. It is now known as JustWise, with its headquarters in London and offices around the world, including in Singapore. Its selling point is how customers can send money at the real exchange rate with no hidden fees. Mr. Carmen was in Singapore in February to visit his office here, and we have lunch at New Ubin Seafood at Chimes. Over a meal of local favourites such as Hokkien Mee and Garlic Crab, he talks about his business and also his very interesting early years growing up in Estonia. And what are the key features of WISE? The, the problem that we're solving for people in businesses is how do they get money in one country in one currency to another country in another currency without costing an arm and a leg with a, with a bank and, uh, and being really inconvenient. So uh, people come to use WISE to, uh, for speed. So we're now able to move money between countries less than 20 seconds and for cost. The main problem with using banks and others is they might tell you it costs $10 or $20 or maybe they say it's free but the truth is they really hide their their fees in the exchange rate so they just give you a, a different exchange rate to what you see on Reuters and other places. Do you think uh, what you're doing would change the industry in any way? I think it will. I think it's very hard to go back. It's very hard to put the genie back in the bottle if we, as we've demonstrated that it's possible to, to move money to infinitely faster than it was before um, and do it without any hidden fees. It's very hard for the millions of people now relying on WISE to kind of go back and accept that, hey, you know, it's okay that this takes five days to get money from Singapore to Australia and it's okay that it, I'm being told that it's free but, but actually there's a 5% markup on the exchange rate. I don't think the world's going to accept this. I think there's only one direction where um, it's just going to get so much better for people and businesses in the future. Like we'll have a role in this, but there's lots of others who will as well. Why did you decide to set up shop in Singapore? As we're moving money across countries, we're, we have to be a global enterprise. Businesses in Asia are almost always international almost by design just because there's, there's many markets where they operate within the regions and usually cross country so there's, there's a lot of demand for our services from Asia anyway and we ended up setting up uh, in Singapore about five and a half years ago as our hub uh, where we now have 250 people in, uh, in Singapore where we service both the Asian countries and, and uh, Australia and New Zealand. What was it like uh, growing up in, in Estonia and do you think it affected your career and business in any way later on? I'm born in the 1980 and I was nine years old when the Berlin Wall fell and I was 11 years old when Estonia regained its, its independence mm. from Soviet Union. And uh, it was definitely the, the years of my teens where the country went from having no businesses, no services, no, almost nothing at all uh, other than some of the things that we inherited from Soviet Union and then had to rebuild uh, on its own. So it was definitely an interesting time where everyone kind of had to be an entrepreneur and the things had to get produced because if you're not doing it, then no one else is. So looking back at this, it was inspiring to see uh, so many new things uh, being developed by really ordinary people. Do you think there are any similarities between Estonia and Singapore? We're both very like small countries. I think one thing that uh, Estonia did in the early days, uh, so 10, 15 years ago, is we developed a digital identity system, uh, which we're all very proud of, and it works really well for people interacting with governments and tax authorities and these kinds of things. But it was only possible because we're a small nation and relatively well organized. And I, I see that the same has happened in Singapore, where you develop the Sing Pass and small nations have to be in some ways uh, very organized and, and also very international because uh, otherwise we're, we're just very small. Thanks very much for having lunch. Thank you.